Okay, so this is actually the entrance coming up to the, it's a long sort of walkway heading up to the Fremantle prison. And as you can see these murals look pretty cool. It's like the warden behind the, the prisoners and in front of them, their rifles. And these guys are on the chain gang. Okay, the Fremantle prison is actually the, the only um, World Heritage Site in Perth, WA. So as you can see ahead there, that's the actual entrance, that's the doorway to the prison. Hey guys, so this we're outside the prison and these are different um, residences attached to the prison and on the same grounds. So this one here is the chaplain's residence. It looks fairly grand, it's a standalone building. Um, the others that we're going to show you seems to be like duplexes. They probably weren't um, as important as the chaplain in the day. So we'll just move along here and we'll um, show you as you can see the chaplain's residence has got a nice big garden over here gardens sort of um, the lawns are nicely mowed and that but it hasn't really been kept but maybe they're in the process of, um, of uh, doing it up and re-gardening it and that so as we move along we'll um, come to the next residence here this one doesn't look too bad actually. They're all double story places, nice big uh, verandas around them. Then you've got balconies on top. They're all heavily burglar, um, they've got quite thick wrought iron burglar bars on them for obvious reasons. So this one here is uh, number 10. And this one here in front of us is the superintendent's residence. As you can see over there, it's attached to the other building. And if you look on top there on the other building, you can see the barbed wire razor blade um, wiring up there. So prisoners obviously couldn't escape in the day. That stuff will be pretty sharp, I would imagine. It'll slice you up. As we move, this this garden here is quite nicely kept. All the lawns nice and green and mowed. This one here is the gatekeeper's residence, and that's actually attached to the, the entrance of the prison, as you can see. Okay, guys, we're on the other side now of the prison, the entrance to the prison. This is number 18. This is the surgeon's res residence. The old surgeon got himself quite a an impressive residence here. Check this out, the veranda goes right around. The balcony goes right around. Massive limestone walls over there, separating him from the actual prison. And the gardens are very, very well maintained. So this looks pretty good. So here we are at number 16 the magistrate's residence. Now, I think the surgeon beat the magistrate. Probably won't happen these days, but uh, the magistrate's uh, residence isn't as opulent as the surgeon's. And I reckon there might have been a few um, arguments about this one in the day, maybe even at the well club. Okay, we'll move along. This, uh, the magistrate's residence isn't too badly. The, the, the gardens are quite good, very well maintained. There's a bit of restoration work going on there. And as we move around, you can see that bar, that um, razor wire on top there. It will slice you up a bit if you try to get to the old magistrate. So we'll move around along this way. Nice, nice big tree over there. 
these gates over here says it all. It says danger, so they are doing some sort of um, restoration work over there in, in that building. As we move along over here, this is number 14. And this is the chief uh, warden's residence. These ones attached to the entrance of the jail. It's not as opulent as the other two, but it's pretty good. Hey guys, we're going to do a, um, a tour of the Fremantle prison here in Fremantle. It's the only World Heritage uh, site in the old of WA. And the area we're standing in now is the visitors room. This is where prisoners um, came to have uh, contact visits with their friends or relatives who ever came to visit them. Small, tiny room, a couple of, uh, there's about three windows there where they could have these contact visits and that's about it. But I guess that's what happens when you um, commit a crime, you have to, you can't have the luxury of the uh, Parmelia Hilton I guess. So this here is an Heidelberg um, printing press. This mechanical printing press was purchased in 1971 and used in the Fremantle prison print shop until the prison closure in 1991. It was subsequently transferred to Casarina prison where it was used until 2015. The press was made in circa 1960. Good year that. Standard size is UK prisons. They call them convicts from the UK, uh, actually imperial convicts really. That's it, that <laughs> is it. And it stays like that till this place shut. And they take it out in the morning, there's a big cesspit out the back there, out she goes, and, and then they bring it back in at night. Simple as that. And it goes on till this place shuts, it's part of the reason, because it really didn't change much at all.
just this bone, it's actually allowing it to jar out. It says you can't actually bend it, but it did, but by allowing it to get putting pegs in it under steam and pressure, and then you use it for holding this great thick wine clothing. <laughs> of the real poor here, I can't remember. How many lashes during the tenure here? 6,600. 6, 6, if you give a man 100 lashes just for trying to escape, 100 lashes would kill you. Have you ever heard a town, not enough room in here to swing a cat? This is the cat I'm talking about. What about in a, in a sort of warship to be sitting in a bag, swinging on this day well? If the cat is, can you hear the term, the cat is being let out of the bag. This a man's going to be punished. Or another term, which they use, have you heard of? Cat's got your tongue in, eh? You can't even speak. But what goes on? A man will be lashed up here. His shirt will be taken off. He's got a bear of protection around his neck and around his waist to protect him. The man who's doing the job, the flagellator. Even the wardrobe didn't want to do this. This is punishment. This is takes a certain type of man to do this because he's going to take the skin off sometimes out of the bones screaming he's going to scream off his head but I'll, I'll put you in the position not the man being flogged but you're next in line you're standing in the wall you're chained up and the guards are watching watching you and you are ready to be it you're watching the screaming that's going on you're, you're getting covered in his blood as the screaming goes on from this around the prison they complained about it the people around here complained about it but a man getting flogged he would never, <clears throat> he, would, he could be sentenced to 100 lashes, say for 18 lashes for trying to escape, or whatever. But he'll never go to stand out and kill him. What they'll do is, once the, the surgeon will step in, and he'll say, stop the, hanging, stop the uh, punishment for now, we'll bring him back later, when he gets better. And they'll cut him down, they'll lay him down here, just, just be dust down here, and he'll be laid down here, but they've got to protect his wounds. What will they use? Something cheap and nasty. Salt. Salt. Rock salt. Rub it. Rub it. Up he gets again. Whoa. Cut it off. And remember, you stood in line. You're next. You dragged across. You know. There you go. And then you're done. And then what will happen? In a period of time, the, judge, uh, the, the surgeon will say he's ready to take. You can take more. So they'll bring him back. Maybe he's only taking 25 lashes. This could go on for one period of time after the other for weeks and months. Happy Christmas. Mr. Christmas.